What does France stand for? Its values have certainly been put to the test these past 12 months. One year ago today, leaders from around the world took part in one of the nation's biggest marches since World War II. They chanted, Je suis Charlie, after the bloodbaths at the satirical newspaper that had poked fun of the prophet and also the killings at a kosher supermarket. They defended laïcité, that very French brand of secularism that strictly keeps religion and the republic separate. But they also reflected on why, for instance, some junior high school pupils in working class areas refused to honor a minute of silence for the victims and reflected on those, particularly from Muslim backgrounds, who did not feel that they were Charlie in particular. Since then, talk of how to live together has been overshadowed by the far right's historic gains in local and regional elections and by the state of emergency that's followed the November Paris attacks. Now, with new anti-measures in the works, does safety first trump all priorities and values? Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at a brave new France, you might say. Uh, with us, French Senator Nathalie Goudet. She chairs the Upper Chamber's Commission on Jihadist Networks. Thanks for being back with us. Thank you. We're also joined by sociologist uh, Eric Fassin. His latest book, The Left, The Future of a Disillusion. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Scott Sayer wrote the cover story for Harper's Magazine, uh, The Ultimate Terrorist Factory, about those who allegedly inspired uh, the Paris attacks. We'll talk about that perhaps a, a little bit later on in our conversation. And uh, we're pleased to welcome Yasser Louati of the Collective Against Islamophobia. Thank you for being with us. The France 24 debate, where you can join the, join the conversation, and you have on Facebook and Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. Now, after that giant march of one year ago, there was even a catchphrase in this country, the, the spirit of the 11th of January. Uh, this time, no repeat. France is under a state of emergency. But there was a ceremony on Sunday under uh, a tight security, a public gathering at Paris's Place de la République, where a legendary French pop singer, Johnny Hallyday, sang a song entitled A Sunday in January. Um, when you look at the images of the Place de la République, Nathalie Goulet, uh, what's changed in one year? It was not too crowdy first. And uh, I think that uh, um, people didn't buy it. I mean, it's something which uh, the spirit is, uh, is gone with the wind, I mean, and gone with the state of emergency. So that spirit of January 11th is dead and buried? I think so. Why Definitely. is that? Well, first of all, we have this state of emergency. We never had so much of Islamophobia. We have anti-Semitism. Uh, we had this uh, uh, terrible atmosphere after November 13 that we do not have to forget. And, um, and so instead of uh, creating something like how to live together, we have more and more differences. And I think that the spirit of this uh, um, January 11 is definitely gone with the wind. Eric Fassin, you agree? I'm not sure there ever was something called the spirit of January 11th. It's a phrase, it's a catchphrase, but who knew what people were demonstrating for or against on January 11th last year? Uh, in fact, they had very different reasons for mobilizing. Some were on the left, some were on the right, some were very... Uh, concerned about laïcité, but some felt that this had nothing to do with secularism, because in fact terrorists are not speaking really in the name of religion, so there were very different versions. So what I think we know now is not just what the population is thinking, but what the government has been doing. Uh, because in fact, that's the most visible part, including the fact that in order to have this beautiful thing happening in Place de la République, they had to clear it from refugees who were there, uh, in the days before. So, in fact, the hypocrisy of the very generous discourse has been belied by the policies uh, in the last year. Uh, you say that, but uh, those law and order policies of the government are very popular. They are popular. Uh, they're not efficient. There's no reason to believe that they're efficient, including because we've had a repetition of terrorist acts. 
Uh, and there's no reason to believe that, for example, uh, making life difficult for people who have nothing to do with terrorism is going to help in any way, except in creating more resentment. So the fact that one encourages people to think that there's an enemy that is a foreign enemy uh, may be efficient in terms of mobilizing, but I'm not sure it's going to be very popular uh, once we get to the vote, except for the extreme right. Yes, Alouati, do you think France is more or less united? Let's talk first about the, uh, the march you are showing right now on your screen. And uh, I'm going to use quite of an aggressive word that, that would be a masquerade. You are here talking about freedom of speech when you have various dictators walking side by side when they are themselves putting in jail as journalists and any political... This is the march of last year. Of, of last year, of course. And when it comes to uh, the popularity of these uh, liberty side measures, well, for example, 74% of the French people said they did not want François Hollande to seek a second term. Why wouldn't François Hollande listen to them? And if François Hollande was really sure that the French public opinion was behind him, why wouldn't he seek a referendum on the measures he's trying to implement into the Constitution? But coming back to your question, France is becoming more and more polarized. We have communities turning against each other and politicians are playing the game of divide and conquer. We have an upcoming presidential election in about a year and a half and every single candidate is actually trying to use that for political gains. And we have not seen any sense of unity in the face of a common threat. So right now the question remains, where are we going all together? When terrorists hit us, they made no difference between people, people's colors, religions, political ideas. And right now we are really uh, worried about the becoming of our country, not only after the terrorist attacks, but become the people leading us right now who pretend to lead this country, don't really care about national cohesion, but more about their own careers and political mandates. Scott Sayar. Uh, there's a lot going on there, but but I think um, I'd, I'd like to respond to the to the discussion of uh, what has changed or what has not changed, um, and especially the notions about what uh, what January 11th last year was actually about. Uh, I, I mean, it seems to me that quite often uh, moments such as these uh, in the French context bring up questions of identity, uh, which is surprising. Um, I suppose that uh, an equivalent, for example, if you take the example of 9-11 of in the United States, um, it's striking to see uh, to what extent the response was not wrapped up uh, in notions of distinguishing between good Americans and bad Americans. The case in France is, is obviously quite different, especially insofar as many of the killers uh, from the Charlie Hebdo attacks uh, to the November 13th attacks were French. Um, French or European. It's a big the, difference. Which is a significant Island. difference, uh, absolutely. By the same token, Charlie Hebdo was a defender of a very particular French version uh, of a set of values. And, uh, and I think that differentiates the, uh, the French response uh, from the response of maybe many other countries to similar circumstances. Because Charlie Hebdo did make some people feel uncomfortable, whereas after the November attacks, there was a feeling of unanimity. I think that's right. Uh, the the November attacks obviously targeted people who didn't have any particular ideological program that they were selling. Uh, that being said, um, as a as a means of dividing uh, a nation, which is ultimately the goal of, of Salafi jihadism, uh, or or part of the goal of Salafi jihadism, uh, attacking such a divisive character and essentially forcing or attempting to force the culture to take sides. Uh, ended up being a very effective tactic. Um, as, as everyone has noted, there are more divisions in France today. France is on edge today in a way that it maybe wasn't on January 7th, 2015. And, and one has to acknowledge the success uh, of, of the jihadists who committed these attacks in creating the divisions, in creating the tensions that they sought to create. Have the jihadists got what they wanted? Well, I think that uh, we have uh, very strong roots uh, regarding division first of all. And then uh, maybe we can expect from um, a government to lead instead of following the opinion. You say it's very popular, but it's, it's not because it's popular that it's efficient. It's not because it's popular that it's right 
Otherwise, we can do, go back to 1933 in Germany, and it was very popular, but it was not right. So uh, I'm not compared. I, I don't want to compare anything. Um, uh, but but if you are just following, you know, the people, you are not leading the country. You know, somebody who is leading the country would be able to have a speech which is over the crowd, which is not exactly what happened today. It's exactly the contrary. We are just running after the National Front. And uh, I think it's not the good way to lead the country. Running after the National Front, not running after the jihadists. No, we are running after the National Front. Because, you know, we, we, we voted more than 14, 14 anti-terrorist law in 14 years. And I don't think that they were efficient. So we are just, uh, um, you know, uh, putting some uh, um, pieces to adjust. But we do not have any global policy. We don't target education. We don't speak about prevention, which is so important. We are just talking about criminal repression, criminalization, and and we don't uh, we don't enter into the the bottom of the subject, which, which is uh, how to create the citizen link again, how to bring back the people to the citizen link. All right, and that was a point made uh, by by Eric Fassin a little while earlier uh, about uh, some of the measures that have been proposed by the government just before the new year. France's socialist prime minister surprised many when he announced a constitutional amendment to, in some cases, strip dual nationals, even those born on French soil, of their French citizenship. For Manuel Valls, acts of terror are a betrayal of one's nation. Blind killing of fellow citizens in the name of an ideology is a bloody, total and definitive denial of any will to live together without distinction between origins and faith. So it amounts to denying the soul of our nation. So what do you do? Well, what's striking is that uh, I was one of uh, quite a few people who signed a petition uh, against uh, Nicolas Sarkozy's proposal to do more or less the same thing in 2010 alongside other people, such as Nathalie Boulet, but also such as François Hollande, Manuel Valls, Christian Taubira, and others. What it means is that basically what everyone understands is that principled opposition in 2010 beca became something that without principles in 2015, and that now we have a discussion about the fact that terrorism has to do with immigration. This is what everyone understands. That is, once you start saying that, of course, it wouldn't solve any practical problem to deprive people who've committed uh, suicide uh, from their citizenship. But at least symbolically, it would be powerful. Well, what is the symbol? The symbol is that terrorism has to do with citizenship and with foreigners. Whether it's by nationals or not, the idea of depriving of citizenship as a punishment uh, is practically irrelevant, but symbolically potent and potent in a disastrous way. That is, it reinforces the very themes that have been the basis of National Front discourse. And it's in the code. It's in the civil code already. You have some disposal in the civil code that are already on... on, on. So if we need it, we just have it in the, in the That's code. That's why it's symbolic. Yeah, we don't need it in the Constitution. It's agitating fears. Scott Sayer, when you did your research, uh, how, how much of this ideology comes from abroad when it comes to those French nationals who've carried out some of these acts? Uh, most, of the, most of the ideology comes from abroad, there's no question of that. Um, though it may be accessed directly uh, within France. Um, and, and certainly that's the case for the vast majority of, of the young men and women who have left for Syria uh, since the start of the Syrian Jihad. Um, but uh, on the question of, of déchéance de nationalité, of, of, of taking away uh, a, a second nationality, um, as has already been said, it's a, it's a, it's essentially a terrible waste of time. Uh, not only is it hypocritical on the part of those who are proposing it, uh, it's furthermore been recognized to have no practical effect. Uh, it's in fact, it's in fact a tool that has been used in the past few years in France. Uh, there are several people who have been uh, stripped of their French nationality. There's no evidence whatsoever to suggest that that has decreased terrorism. Furthermore, the notion that by stripping someone uh, of his or her nationality and then sending them to the other country uh, where they're a national, 
Algeria, say, uh, seems seems absurd. That, that is to say, to to uh, to believe that by simply getting rid of the problem, uh, by sending the problem somewhere else, you will solve the problem. It seems completely illogical. I, I'm I'm personally uh, dismayed by the lack of uh, by the lack of concrete debate around this measure, and frankly, most measures involving Islamic terror in France. And 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 I'll put it to you, Yasser Louati. Uh, you heard Nathalie Goulet. Mm -hmm. She's saying that the government and is rising to the bait of the National Front. Is it to the bait of the National Front? or to the bait of the jihadists. We heard, for instance, the French president say we're at war after the November attacks. Let's quote Abu Musa al Sori, one of the theoreticians for, uh, for Daesh. What did he say? We need blind terrorist attacks to generate fear and then repercussions against the Muslim minorities in Western Europe and then fuel our recruitment uh, channels uh, for, for our camps. What is the government doing? Exactly that. The second, when you say the government is running after the National Front, of course he is. I mean, like when you are leading a long-term battle while thinking with, in, in short terms, meaning your upcoming elections, when, for, when, for example, Manuel Valls says uh, uh, explaining means justifying, talking about the process, to, the, the radicalization process, what is he saying? That people are born terrorists? So that means there is no radicalization process, starting with the rejection from the alienation, leading to hatred of society, as Mark Trevedic said it. And then let's, let's also look at how the government is reacting. Of course, they declared a state of emergency that was necessary in the wake of the attacks. But of course, they failed to answer the questions. How come you get attacked twice within 11 months, two waves of terrorist attacks, and nobody got sacked, nobody resigned, nobody took responsibility. At the same time, we seek even more powers, even more extreme measures to actually crack down on everyday citizens without asking where did we fail? When it comes to the political gains from it, we know François Hollande is basically preparing for his re-election, hoping that at the second round of the presidential election in 2017, he will be facing Marine Le Pen and that people would vote for him by default, just as in 2002 when people were, uh, had a choice between Jacques Chirac and Jean-Marie Le Pen. So now the question is, how efficient are these measures? Everybody agrees here, they're inefficient. They are counterproductive, but in the meantime, they, 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 uh, they polarize even more French society between the ones who, are, who, who may lose their citizenship and the ones who won't. All right, when we come back, we're going to uh, pick up on this point of how do you prevent things and how do you have this dialogue, uh, this vivre ensemble, living together dialogue that was talked about last year. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.